Hi everyone, this is Teacher Jane again. And my lesson for today is a topic that is a prerequisite to statistics and probability. But before that, if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel, please click subscribe and feel free to ask questions through the comment section. Out of curiosity, let me list the numbers that are consecutive from 6 to 1. They are 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And then multiplying 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, it will be equal to 720. Another way of writing this process that I have done is 6 factorial. So therefore, if I'm going to list again the numbers that are consecutively descending from 5 to 1 and multiply it 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, that will be equal to 120. And the shorter way of writing this process is 5 factorial. So this is our topic for today. They are called factorial notations, which is the process of multiplying a series of descending natural numbers only. But before we proceed with other related topics about factorial notation, please bear in mind that there are special factorial notations such as 0 factorial is equal to 1 and 1 factorial is equal to 1. Let us now apply the idea of the factorial notation, which is actually very easy. Like if I say 6 factorial, it only means 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. So you only have to multiply consecutive descending whole numbers until it reaches 1. So if it's 3 factorial, it is 3 times 2 times 1. Okay, so example number 1, we have 6 factorial plus 3 factorial. So 6 factorial is 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, then added to 3 factorial, which is 3 times 2 times 1. So you can actually solve this instantly in your calculator by pressing 6 and the punctuation mark, okay, that is actually in your calculator keys, and you can get instantly this answer. So 6 factorial is 720, and 3 factorial is a value of 6, so 720 plus 6 will be equal to 726. So that's how easy it is actually. So let's have example. Moving on with example 2, we have 6 factorial over 3 factorial or simply 6 factorial divided by 3 factorial. So to represent the numerator, we have 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 and the denominator is 3 times 2 times 1. Now before moving on to multiplying all these numbers, which is quite large, we can actually cancel a common factor, or common factors actually. So we can see from the top, we have 3 to 1, and from the bottom part, we have 3 to 1, so we can cancel both of these. So what is left only in our top part is 6 times 5, which is 30, times 4, which is 120. So the value of 6 factorial over 3 factorial is actually 120. The last example before we move on to our practice exercise is example number 3. So we have quantity 7 minus 3 factorial. So the same rule applies. We have to deal first with the value inside the parentheses. So how much is 7 minus 3? That will give you 4. So it means it, it, it will become 4 factorial. Then evaluating 4 factorial, we have 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, which is a value of 24. So simply 7 minus 3 factorial is the same as 4 factorial. Now let's now move on to simple practice exercises. It is now your turn to try what you have learned today by simplifying the following factorial notations. So let's start. 3 factorial plus 2 factorial will be equal to what? Okay, did you get 12? Okay, very good. Next is number 2. 5 factorial minus 0 factorial. Did you get 119? Remember, 0 factorial has a value of 1. So it will be 120 minus 1, which is 119. Let's have the last number 3. You have quantity 5 minus 2 factorial all over 4 factorial. 
of course, the top part will become 3 factorial all over 4 factorial. And then expanding 3 factorial, you have 3 times 2 times 1 all over 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. And there are common factors which are t, 2, 1, same, the bottom part, t, 2, 1, which we can now cancel. So what's left in the top part is not actually 0, but there is 1 that's left there. And what's left on the bottom part is 4. So our final value is 1 over 4. The second topic that I'm going to discuss with you, which is very much related to statistics and probability, is called the fundamental counting principle. But before learning FCP, okay, we have to first learn how to make a tree diagram and, of course, the next method, which is a listing method. So let us start with a tree diagram. What is actually a tree diagram? It is a method when, wherein you make a sketch out of a given problem to come up with your solution. So let's try this one. Mother prepares your snacks for school from Monday to Wednesday. She prepares three of your favorite sandwiches, egg, ham, and bacon sandwich. In how many possible ways can you choose which sandwich to bring to school from Monday to Wednesday? So list. Okay, so you are going to bring different sandwiches from Monday to Wednesday. So this is now our tree diagram. Monday, Tuesday, and then Wednesday. What if on Monday, you choose egg sandwich, therefore Tuesday could be ham, and then Wednesday is bacon. Then we connect it, since it's a diagram, we have to connect egg, ham, bacon. But, there's another option, egg, then bacon, and then ham. Okay, next option is you choose ham. So, if it's ham, could be on Tuesday, could be egg, and then Wednesday is bacon. Then, of course, there's another option with ham, could be bacon, and then egg. And of course, the last option is bacon. Okay, Tuesday could be egg, then Wednesday is ham. Okay, and last, of course, bacon, then you have ham, and then egg. So, if we are going to count, these are the tips. So, you have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and there are 6 okay, possible options for you to bring your sand choice of sandwiches. So, if we are to list them down, you have EHP, egg, ham, bacon, egg, bacon, ham, and these are the options. We have a total of six choices. So that's how you use the tree diagram in coming up with your solution. Let's have the next method. It's called the second method in determining the possible number of outcomes is by listing method. So what is listing method? It's literally listing the possible outcomes from a specific event or experiment. So let's have this one. In how many ways can you arrange the letters from the word T-E-A or T? How many of these new words have meaning? So, listing all those words, okay, starting with the original, T-E-A, okay, that's the first word. Second would be t a, E. Okay, third word, we start now with E. E, A, T, and then E, T, A. Okay, next we start with letter A. T, E, A, 
A E T. So there are actually one, two, three, four, five, and the last one we have six new words that we're able to come up with. But let's answer the next question. How many of these new words have meaning? So T has a meaning. It, meaning to eat. Eight, past tense of eat. So there are three words, three new words that have meaning to this example. So that's how listing method goes. The next method that I'm going to use in this next example is listing and at the same time diagramming. A special treat to a birthday celebrant in a certain pizza restaurant offers a free pizza. Choice of toppings include a meat and a vegetable of your choice. The choices for meat are ham, bacon, and ground beef. And for vegetables are bell pepper and black olives. How many possible flavors can a celebrant choose? So I'm going to list first all the meat choices. They're ham, bacon, and ground beef. And all the veggie choices, you have bell pepper and black olives. Then, knowing that these are the choices, we simply do a diagram. If it's ham, it could be ham and bell pepper, ham and black olives. So, there are two flavors already. If it's bacon, it could be bacon, bell pepper, bacon with black olives. So, another two choices. And then, for ground beef and bell pepper, ground beef and black olives, then another two options. So, a total of six choices okay, for the birthday celebrant. If you notice, you can already come up maybe with a shorter solution instead of listing and then diagramming. From my example, meat, you have three choices. And then with vegetables, you have two choices. And then we are able to come up with six different flavors. So what do you think is a shorter way in finding the possible outcomes in this type of problem? Okay, very good. It is simply to multiply first option with the second option. So three times two and you have six options. Let's move on to this next example. A special deal for, from a fast food includes a sandwich, side dish, dessert, and a drink for only 75 pesos. The menu includes four different choices of sandwiches, chicken, beef, pork, and tuna, and three choices of side dishes, regular fries, cheese-flavored fries, nachos, and two types of desserts, buko pandan and leche plan. And one, two, three, four, five. Five different kinds of drinks. Okay. So if I'm going to list all the sandwiches, chicken, beef, pork, tuna, side dishes, desserts, and the drinks, we are going to come up with this listing. So knowing that we have quite large number of choices, Okay. I think it's not appropriate to do diagramming in this case or else we are going to come up with a spider's web diagram. So in this case, we are going to use the fundamental counting principle like what we have done in the previous example. We just take note of how many choices are there in the first option. So sandwiches, we have four. Okay, side dishes, one, there are three, and then desserts, there are only two, and then drinks, one, two, three, four, five, five choices, okay? Then same thing, in what we have discovered in the previous example, we just multiply choices from one, four times three, twelve, then multiply it by 2, 24. Then multiply it by 5. You have 120 possible choices okay, that you can order. So imagine if you're going to list that 
and make a diagram or either you do listing method or you do a tree diagram, it will take so much time because you are, have to come up with 120 ways for you to order that special deal from that restaurant. Okay. So that is why it is not always it's not always beneficial to do listing and tree diagram or a combination of listing and tree diagram, but rather we can do the shortcut of doing fundamental counting principles.